Hello everyone, this is Satish Palnyapan and uh, before getting into our uh, talk for today that is go going to be about how to apply deep learning uh, for building an optical character recognition engine for the industry, uh, let me give a short introduction about myself. Um, I work with Cube Cinema Technologies as their machine learning engineer and we try to apply deep learning, machine learning and computer vision and and along with some cool algorithm designs to aid the digital cinema industry. And alongside this, I also work with the Institute of Mathematical Sciences uh, as their, uh, alongside this, I also work with the Institute of Mathematical Sciences uh, under Professor Onurjay Adhikari. Uh, and the, the current work with, 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 which we are going to talk about today is going to be a byproduct of that internship. And before, Starting off, let me give a small small thing about how I got into machine learning and deep learning. And this dates back to 2014, where I got my first internship opportunity to work with professors from the Language Technology Institute from CMU. And we, we, we basically developed an emotion recognition engine for text. And it is during this time when I got the opportunity to explore the deep learning domain when my colleagues were, work, were, were working with the computer vision problem by applying the deep learning using the CAFE framework. And since then, I, I've always wanted to apply this particular, uh, the, I've always wanted to apply deep learning to solve some interesting problem in computer vision. So in, 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 in order to go past the huge learning curve, I took up something motivational for myself to do. Like, I, I loved Pokemon, so I wanted to solve the image captioning problem for Pokemon. That is, given a Pokemon battle image, I'll try to generate a caption for that particular scene. For example, Pikachu is attacking Raichu uh, with a Thunderbolt attack, something like that. And th this is how we started off. And uh, this is the exact same time when I got an internship opportunity at the, at the IMSC and I learned that Rono Joy along with his colleagues, Ayurveda Mahadevan, uh, Rajesh Rao and Parpola to name a few, were working on applying machine learning for the Yinda scripts and trying to decipher the scripts. And they are facing a unique problem in their in, in this particular workflow and they wanted to apply some some and, and, and they wanted to apply deep learning to solve that particular issue. And we'll be talking about what that issue is in the upcoming slides. So just give me a minute, guys. I'll just switch to the slides. Yes. Uh, so the particular domain where we are trying to apply deep learning is called as computational epigraphy. So what what is epigraphy? Uh, epigraphy is the study of ancient inscriptions, and it is the study of ancient inscriptions, and. And by study, I mean uh, we need to understand what the individual characters or the graphemes in those inscriptions mean, and the and what that particular text is trying to convey us. And this will help us a lot to understand about the up, up, about the meaning and the and and what was the culture, the lifestyle that the people at, during that civilization followed, and and. We try to apply math and when we try to apply mathematical concepts and the computer science concepts to this particular field of epigraphy, uh, we call that particular domain as computational epigraphy, and that's what exactly we are doing here. So, and before get, get getting into the algorithms part, let's see what the indescripts are. Um, the the indescripts actually date back to four thousand years back, and these have been uh, one of the largest and one of the most ancient civilizations known to mankind. And the, this particular inscription 
is not deciphered till date. That is, we do not know what these inscriptions are, are, are trying to convey to us and why the name in the script. It's mainly because it were this particular civilization flourished along the banks of the river Indus and it was first discovered at a site called Harappa in the 19th century du du during the British rule and hence the name Indus Valley Civilization or Harappan Civilization. And this civilization is uh, majorly found in the northwestern regions of India and this particularly belongs to uh, uh, the, the regions such as Harappa, Mohanjadaro, Chanudaro, Loka. Lothal and Kalimbangan, which is current day Pakistan, Afghanistan and Israel. So these are some of the sites from which we collected data to build this algorithm. And these inscriptions are majorly found as seals. And these seals are just in the size of your thumb and they are just one inch by one, one inch squares. And the, there is something called ceilings and we will we, we'll be discussing about the ceilings in the upcoming slides. And they are also found as amulets, stone tablets, and pottery. So uh, when we try to Hello guys, sorry that there was a drop in the stream due to the, an, an internet issue. I guess I'm back online. Yeah, so I'll just start sharing my screen again. Yeah, I hope you guys are able to see it. Yeah, uh, so uh, as he was talking, these Indus inscriptions, uh, we, 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 we only have about 3,700 text inscriptions that belong to this M77 corpus. And this was compiled by Dr. Ayurvedan Mahadevan about 40 years back. And each of these text, text inscriptions have only about five graphemes or five characters in length. So that's all the data that we got to decipher these inscriptions and what might be the potential reasons for these inscriptions to be still undeciphered. So the main reason is the paucity of long texts, like the maximum text length that, that you could see for these inscriptions are only about 14 graphemes. And, and there is an issue with the availability of parallel or, or bilingual text to compare with and translate to and fro to. So that is un on another reason why they still remain undeciphered and we do not have any definite knowledge of what was the language that goes behind these, these Indus inscriptions. So, and above all, the number of graphemes available in, in this inscription are, are about 417 symbols with just 3,700 texts. So imagine English, so imagine the English language having a four, 417 alphabets and with just 3,700 li lines of text with you to, to decipher what the particular sentences mean. So that's how hard this pro pro problem is. And though there are about uh, more than 60 claims that we have deciphered these inscriptions, everything conflicts with each other and uh, till date it remains undeciphered. So here you can see some sample of the Indus seals. And 
I'll explain what are seals and what are ceilings. The index scripts actually read from right to left, and these uh, just. Yeah, and this particular seal, if, and, and and this particular thing is is called a seal. It it has it 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 can be compared to a stamp seal that we usually use to punch in letters. So what happens is that they take a clay tablet and they try to punch in this particular seal or that. So as a result, you will be able to see something like this, which is actually caved in due due to that, and this is called as a ceiling. You read these ceilings from left to right, and these seals from right to left. So it's just the mirror images of both. And the symbol you see here is is called as the jar sign, and it's one of the most famous in the signs. And it's usually like used to mark the end of a sentence. And this is the yoga seal. This is the humped bull seal. These are all unicorn seals that you can see here. And these are, these are some of samples of the in the seals. And so what kind of machine learning work has been going through in this particular domain of Indescripts till date? Well, MS have, the ML has been applied to recognize patterns. That is, for, for example, just with the pattern of which the symbols are occurring, we can find to which region that particular pattern belongs to or the particular seal was excavated from. So that is a problem that they have that we, we have been trying to solve. And we also try to recognize these graphemes using a, a, a basic classification problem. And they try to do graphemic pattern searches. That is, they, uh, they try to search for particular patterns in these uh, inscriptions to, to try to di discover new insights into these inscriptions. And, and, and Till date or till 2009, around that time, Guinness inscriptions were not even accepted to be a, a, to be encompassed of a language. Uh, it, they, it was just claimed to be just a sequence of symbols, meaning uh, meaning nothing. They they were just symbols used to indicate some 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 kind of sign du, du, during the ancient times. But uh, but uh, but when Ronaldo Adhikari and his team actually proved that it has a lot of similarity with languages such as English and what kind of patterns that English follows and the syntactic structure that English follows is, uh, is actually followed by Indescripts uh, with various models such as the Marco model and 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 they also used Gantrophy to prove this. And so the Indus inscriptions are actual language like uh, are actual languages like English. German and etc. So this is how machine learning has been applied till date in this uh, in this particular domain. But for all this stuff to be done, we had only uh, the major data set as the M77 corpus, and uh, and this has been compiled about 40 years old, and there have been no recent updates with the latest seals that have been excavated from the various sites. And uh, the main reason for this is that uh, th this requires a lot of laborious human effort. And this human effort must come from experts and not from normal people. So they have to be experts with the industry to be actually able to uh, formulate this corpus. And this corpus can has to be in a, in a standardized way too. And there have been a, quite a lot of political issues revolving around these industries that have been the challenges for this. Uh, so, uh, as we can see here, data has been a huge problem um, with, with with regards to studying the index script. So, this has been a main a bottleneck for for huge breakthroughs in this particular field. And not only the index script, this is the same across all ancient inscriptions. So, this is the specific issue I was talking about that uh, that Ronald Jai and his colleagues were feeling needs to be solved in in, in order to further the decipherment of the index scripts. So this is this problem is called the corpus formulation problem, where we try to uh, formulate a corpus from just the photographs of the artifacts that have been excavated freshly out of uh, the 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 sites. And th 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 this is the problem overview. Like, given us an image or a scan of an index seal, we try to locate where the text patches, and we try to read those symbols. 
and we try to map them to numberings according to Mahadevan's corpus. Like each of these symbols has a particular numbering in the Mahadevan's corpus. So given a, an image, we ultimately need, need a number sequence that represents the particular text in that uh, image. So th this is the problem's overview. And why did we plan to apply deep learning in, in this particular problem? Well, uh, as discussed, there were a lot of complexities I was talking about. And along with this, these inscriptions are like 4,000 years old. And they have undergone a lot of wear and tear. And this is something that the computer vision algorithm needs to understand and needs to factor in while it tries to uh, read these in the inscriptions. And the form factor is like not, uh, yes, like a variety of formats. It, it, it is not some kind of a plain paper where you read the English text from. And we also have very less data and the character set is not fixed. You, you, you do not know that there are only 417 symbols available. There, there may be even more than that. And there are minute differences be, between these symbols that, that make them completely different. Uh, just to explain that, for example, if you if you if you take a look at this, the, this symbol is called the fish sign, and this uh, this has a small dot in the center of it. And if we remove the dot, this particular symbol means something else. And if we have this dot, this particular symbol means something else. So we need to go into the minor details to actually classify the symbols. So this has also been one of the main reasons why we chose deep learning because. Handcrafting features for this particular problem would have been a nightmare because we we have a lot of complexities to tackle. So we chose convolutional neural networks, a particular class of deep learning algorithms, which are actually optimized for the computer vision problem. They are, as you all know, they are they are biologically inspired from how our visual cortex works and how we respond to the overlapping regions of tiling the vision space. So the, these uh, these convolution neural networks are actually capable of uh, uh, form of formulating the features on their own in a in a hierarchical way. That is, uh, they start from the very basics like edges, and they try to combine these edges into object parts, and finally actually end up recognizing the the separate objects. So, and and you need not handcraft these features. They 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 learn these features automatically in different levels. So. We can, so we, we have this particular advantage of learning hierarchical features, uh, which the machine automatically does by itself without us di directing it. So this was one of the design decisions that we had to make of choosing the convolution neural networks. And the next design decision was to use transfer learning and fine tuning. So why did we choose to opt for transfer learning? First of all, uh, these these particular uh these the 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 hierarchical na nature of the convolutional neural networks entails us to use transfer learning that is for example if you build different classifiers to recognize faces cars elephants or chairs all of these classifiers have the same set of basic features in their first level that is just simple lines yes detectors blob detectors and they just progressively uh uh, narrow down to the particular da data set in hand. So we are, we are able to see that the initial layers are actually learning data set unspecific features. And as the network progresses in depth, they start to learn the features that are, that are needed for that particular uh, problem to be solved. For example, faces, cars, and elephants. So we try to harness this particular nature of the convolutional neural networks. and. And mainly because we had very less data. And with very less data, even with uh, uh, high computational powers, we will not be able to train a network from scratch to, to perform uh, exceedingly well in the case of Indescripts. So we tried transfer learning from the ImageNet data set. So we had uh, networks pre-trained on this ImageNet data set. And we transferred the lower level layers, that is these layers that are capable of recognizing these lines, color blobs, and et cetera. And we initialized these filters or weights to the initial layers. And we we learned the later layers of the network from scratch. or we, And we just started fine tuning with a higher learning rate. So this was one of the design decisions we had to make to, uh, to compensate for the less data we had. And 
and the and the next design decision was to do a data augmentation though this might not prove to be something significant it did work out well in our case so we tried to augment the data that we already had by using various uh, image augmentation techniques which were used from uh, the deep learning library kiras and su such as vertical and horizontal flips swirls crops shear rotate scale translate and even artificial lighting so we we wanted to in in incorporate all kinds of uh, distortions that the image uh, excavated from the sites might undergo and some the data sets we used like the samples i showed you before that that was a base data set and we framed two data sets from from that from the primary data set so we named them as the text not text data set and this particular data set has uh, uh, three classes they are text no text and both so uh, as you can see the text data set is basically what uh, comprises of only text regions in a, in a particular seal and the no text data set is something that refers to some kind of animal or deity that is being described in those seals and the both uh, class will actually try it tries to model both like it 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 it, it has a unicorn and uh, the symbols with you know in a particular region so this is particularly used to narrow down where the text patches are exactly we'll be looking into that in the future slides and this is the symbols data set and we initially started off with only uh, classifying whether the jar sign the most frequent in the sign is present or absent in this uh, in the in the particular seal so this data set has uh, has seals where the jar sign is present and where the jar sign is not present so this is this data set particularly is called the symbols data set and just has two classes and the base scene and architectures that we used for this purpose are googly net and some some architecture that we ourselves came up with some trial and error and and we call it the symbol net so this google net architecture as as most of you might know we 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 used only the initial version of this particular architecture and uh, and we'll be seeing on how we we apply transfer learning to this and we'll be seeing about how this symbol net helped us to recognize each of the symbols so the, the, this is an overview of the entire pipeline that we are trying to build. So we, we wanted to model this entire task of optical cadre recognition on the Indescripts as a deep learning pipeline. And we apply deep learning at two stages in this of, of this four stage pipeline. So let me just walk you through the basic structure of what this what these stages do. And Okay, uh, we have a question here, and uh, that is why Google Net and not VGG Net. Well, uh, to be frank, uh, we, we 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 actually started off with Google Net, and we found uh, like the performance of Google Net was much better than VGG Net. And when we tried uh, when when we tried to apply uh, the the transfer learned weights. And Googlenet was the first model that we tried, so we 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 were kind of satisfied with that itself. So we didn't try to explore the different models available. And moreover, this is a much slimmer version than VGGNet, so we 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 opted for Googlenet. And yeah, so let's get back to the pipeline. Um, this pipeline basically has four stages: the region proposal stage, the text the text region extraction stage and the symbol segmentation stage and the symbol identification stage so given an input uh, seal image we first of all try to propose regions where there is a high probability of finding the indus objects or the animals or deities or some some symbols uh, so after proposing these regions we try to extract or we try to formulate the uh, the perfect text only patches from those regions and after formulating this we move to the single segmentation stage where we actually segment each and every of those symbols and we we later just apply a classification problem to just classify whether the particular symbol is a jar or not or to whatever 
uh, number it, but it belongs to the in, in the M77 corpus. So we'll be walking through each and every of these stages in detail as we go go through these slides. Yeah, to start off with, it's the region proposal stage, and the 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 index photograph or the seal scan will be the input for this particular stage, and the output will be the regions where there's a high probability of finding a symbol, animal, uh, or, a, or a deity, or, an, or any iconographic element. Um, so give, 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 given these index seals, we, we first try to extract these seals alone, uh, neglecting the background. And after that is done, we, we use selective search to get the candidate region proposals. And, and, and then we filter and group these pr proposals to suit our purpose based on some hierarchical approach, which we'll be discussing. So uh, the first module is the extract seals module value try to neglect out the background information from the input artifact image. And, and in order to do this, we just used simple uh, uh, image processing techniques. Like we, we first grayscaled and smoothened the, the particular input image uh, with Gaussian filters. This was basically because the seals have undergone a lot of wear and tear, and we wanted to uh, we wanted to smoothen all of those. And we, we wanted only the prominent edges uh, to be visible. So in, in, in our case, the edges of the, part, the particular seal alone. And we then thresholded the particular image with the mean pixel value of the background. And we applied canny edge detection. And we finally cropped out the particular seal alone from the given uh, photograph. And after this was done, uh, we, we went into the selective search uh, thing, which is actually inspired from the region-based convolutional neural networks. And this is the first stage in, 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 in that class of neural networks. And uh, this is actually, uh, this, this actually tries to propose all the possible regions where we are likely to get a symbol or any animal of that sort. And this selective search was a, was a design choice because we, uh, we wanted to narrow down all the regions that that can be uh, that we need to scan through. We we cannot do a brute force technique where we try to apply uh, where we try to slide a window all through the image and do it. So we 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 this this particular selective search has advantages of the of exhaustive search and segmentation. That is like like segmentation. It it tries to use the image structure in in guiding it in. Uh, for 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 guiding it through the for, through the region proposals and it also has advantages of exhaustive search wherein the the object regions are not constrained by the size and the scale of the image so and this also for uses hierarchical grouping where we try to group these regions based on the color texture size and the fills in the particular image and we 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 had to find out the perfect match for the selective search parameters like the scale, min size, min area, and sigma. And we had a set of values that actually matched here. So we, we used those set of values, which, which was found through grid search. And we, we used them to, re to repetitively get the candidate region proposals. But however, these region proposals were quite huge in number. So we wanted to improvise the quality of these regions uh, th that are proposed by selective search. And we went into a four level region grouping and filtering hierarchy that uh, that that essentially does uh, these four steps. Merge concentric proposals, contain box removal, draw, bo draw su super bo boxes, and draw extended super boxes. So I'll be explaining on what each of these steps are. So essentially here, you are able to see that selective search has proposed a lot of regions, which are actually generalizations of each other or, or approximations of each other. We remove all such concentric proposals first, and then we, 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 we remove all the contained proposals. That is, for, for example, this, this particular symbol is proposed within this huge re region. So we just remove this internal proposal, and we only have the generalized proposal. And after that, um, we, we try to draw a super boxes. That is, uh, if, uh, if two regions are, are, are overlapping more than 40%, we try to group them and draw a minimal super box around them. And, uh, and the next thing is to draw extended super boxes. That is, if two, 
two boxes are actually aligning with each other up, up to a certain th threshold we try to extend that particular box to actually en encompass the entire text region so the last two stages as the the draw super box and the draw extended super box actually had something to do with the interscripts because these interscript inscriptions are usually um, uh, have their symbols aligned along the horizontal or the vertical axis. So we wanted to harness this particular uh, information we had and we in grouping the regions. So once the re region grouping was done, we had the candidate regions and the next thing was to extract the perfect uh, text regions alone. To do that, uh, we, we went for classifying the regions proposed by the previous stage into text, no text, and both, as we were already discussing. So if we did this, we'll, we'll have information on uh, how we can subtract and add these regions to actually com com come up with the final text region formulation. So for region classification, uh, we used GoogleNet. And th this, this essentially had about uh, three classes, as I already mentioned, text, no text, and both. And uh, uh, this particular Google Net has something called network and network architecture, which actually improves the representational power of the of, of this particular net, network architecture. And this encompasses one inception module. And we can find about nine inception modules across the depth of this network like this. And this is a 22 layer deep network. And of all this, we, uh, we, we chose to tra transfer learn the first six, uh, in, in the, the, the weights of the first six inception modules. And the learning rate was frozen until the first six inception layers. And the last three inception layers, we, we actually doubled the current learning rate that was actually there. And we fine tuned to suit the data set in hand. That is the text no text in both data set. So once this region classification was successful, uh, uh, like we can see the accuracy scores that we had here. The Google net is actually a, a, a level based architecture wherein you 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 get outputs at three different levels at one third two third and the full network depth so then the main idea here is that as we pro go progressively into depths we the accuracy actually increases and that is the case here we get about an, a 90 percent accuracy for this classifier and these are some of some of the sample classifications that we actually get and this particular thing is is actually both uh, a, a both part in the particular seal, but it got classified as no text because it was not able to recognize that this is particularly a symbol. These are some of the shortcomings we have. And these are the graphs for the region classification continuation neural network. And this is the accuracy plot, of the, which is the iteration counts and the loss plot. And we, we have the learning rate plot and we use the step uh, Me mechanism to, to modify our learning rates and yeah the next thing is to okay uh, we have a question here asking why didn't you try GANs uh, well um, we, we uh, when we first initially tried to it developed this particular thing. I didn't have the exposure about GANs, and it was back in 2000. Uh, it, 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 it was at the end of 2015, and we, we were not sure of how to apply GANs and all. So we didn't try applying GANs for this particular purpose. So, and we opted only for convolutional neural networks, and it did turn out to work out well. So this is some. This is an interesting idea. We can definitely try out GANs and see what, what what we actually get so and getting back to our uh, slides um, we were so we have cla classified all the regions into these three classes and ba based on this we are we are going to add and subtract these regions to actually get the final text only regions um, so how do we go about doing this is that we have two methods uh, that is the draw text box and trim text box methods so what do these essentially do? I, I'll just explain with an example. Um, here, as you can see, you have 
the text region and the both region. So what we essentially try to do in the draw text box method is that we try to group all the text and the both regions. And we try to draw super boxes around these regions. So effectively, we, we have the entire region in the script, which, which consists of text regions. So after grouping or combining all of these regions, we try to subtract out the no text regions that have actually been proposed. So in, in this case, you can see that the head of this elephant has been cut off, and we only get the final text-only regions here. So uh, this is a hierarchical approach that we follow to actually get the text patches out of the, uh, the, the seals image. And one, once we got these text patches, the next uh, thing was to actually go about for symbol segmentation. So uh, we didn't try to apply deep learning in this particular area. We only opted for basic image processing techniques, but we have ideas of applying deep learning too. And how do we go about is that given a text patch like this, the basic idea is to uh, get the symbols out of this text patch as, have, uh, as it has been indicated here. So this is a six level algorithm. And I'll just explain what we actually try to do, do here. First, we try to grayscale the particular image. And we try to remove the color information. After that, we use also thresholding to actually binarize the image. And, after, and, and, and we apply Gaussian blur for the same reasons before in the region proposal stage. And we, we actually do this on the binarized image. And once this is done, you will get a, a heat map kind of image, as you can see here. And we applied connected color component analysis to actually uh, get all the connected components into a single region. But in cases like these, you can see that this particular strip will alone constitute a partic uh, one region. So we had to apply the same region grouping mechanism. And we borrowed some steps from the region grouping me mechanism, like the contain box removal, raw super box, and raw extended super box. So these three methods were applied. And we were able to successfully group uh, these seals into one, uh, one, one, one whole blob. So once th this was done, we we had uh, we 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 had the, the the symbols alone cropped out of the text patch, and after this was the symbol identification stage. So initially, when we developed this algorithm, we only had the idea of cla classifying whether it belonged to a jar or a no jar. Uh, so we, we we didn't try to solve for all the 417 symbols. But we are in the process of doing it for the most frequent symbols now, and the results of which I'll be showing soon. And uh, so yes, so, so given a text patch which has been segmented out as symbols, um, we'll try to apply this jar no jar classifier and try um, and, and tell whether it's a, uh, we have a jar or we do not have a jar in that particular symbol. So for this, we actually came up with uh, a very simple uh, convolutional neo neo neural network architecture. Uh, as you can see here, it has two con convolutional layers with followed by a dropout, and uh, two fully connected layers sandwiched in between a nonlinear layer. So this essentially had uh, th this was a yeah, essentially a binary classifier where we tried to classify uh, the presence or absence of the jar sign. So we, we, we were not able to apply any kind of transfer learning here. We, we had to train it from scratch. But the results were actually good. We got an accuracy award of about 92.07%. And the main reason for us not scaling up to all the symbols is that uh, we had to formulate a data set that actually said what each and every symbol looked like. And we are in the process of it. So it will be available soon. And the. And these are the graphs for the symbol identification CNN training process. And as we can see here, we have actually overfit the data a bit, um, which we are trying try which we are trying to avoid now. And we are trying out different architectures that have come 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 out re recently for for this purpose with tran with transfer learning. And so this is pretty much how. Given an 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 index seal image, we try to uh, give a number sequence that actually represents what the text is telling, uh, and we'll just be seeing an, an an example flow of how of of 
by using one, one of the famous seals, the humped bull seal. So given this seal, we just extract the seal alone. But in, in this case, we do not have any background information. So this particular stage has no job here. And after extracting the seal, we apply selective search and we get an array of region proposals. And we then fine tune group these region proposals to actually uh, uh, give, give out region proposals that are worth our time. And these region proposals were then classified into no text, text, and both. And based on these classifications, we then go for the text region formulation. And in, in this case, you, you can see that the text region ha has been subtracted with this horn from the bull uh, by subtracting the no, no text region. And we have a perfect patch, a, a text patch. And this text patch is then subjected to symbol segmentation, where we segment these symbols into, uh, into separate regions. And you can see there is a small error where it is de it is detecting a a, a, a non-symbol region as a symbol region, but this is basically because we are just applying a, a simple image processing techniques and not opting for any machine learning here. And and once these symbols have been cropped out, we we actually classify them into the respective numbers according to the M77 corpus. As you can see here, uh, the jar sign corresponds to sign number 342. And these are some signs we have been working on cu currently to actually classify. So these are included. And we are trying to expand it uh, to finally reach the goal of 417 symbols. And in, in order to evaluate this pipeline, we had uh, 50 randomly chosen seals. And we tried to up, 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 apply the various stages of this pipeline to each of those seals. And we try to measure what kind of accuracy we were getting. And at the end of the region proposal and text region extraction stage, uh, we, we, we were able to extract uh, 43, uh, we were able to extract the full text regions in about 43 seal images. And we were, uh, we were only able to get a partial text region in about seven of them. And of the 43, uh, where when this 43 was subjected to the symbol segmentation stage, uh, we we were actually able to get about uh, 29 full symbols, um, uh, or in 29 cases, we actually succeeded in getting out all the full symbols. And in level cases, it was partial, and we were not able to get any symbols in three of these cases. And this is mainly because the seals have been subjected to a lot of wear and tear, and the symbol is itself illegible in that particular uh, in, in in that particular seal, and we have future plans of uh, to to accommodate such heavily damaged seals by using some kind of a Markov model where we can predict uh, the seal that is going to come based on the data we have. Like if we have three three symbols, uh, like uh, the jar sign is usually found in the end of the text. So using some some principles like these, we'll be able to tackle this particular pro problem, and uh, and the same applies for the partial text regions too. Uh, wherein we get about uh, in five cases, the full symbols were recovered, and and two partial and zero none. So we get a for, we get an accuracy of eighty six percent for for extracting the full text regions. And the successful full symbol extractions were at 68%. And after extracting this, as we have already seen, the symbol classification takes 92% uh, accuracy. So we are trying to improve the various parts of this pipeline. Like we we are we are we are planning to apply the machine learn some machine learning based concepts in the region proposal and the symbol segmentation st stages, and try to make it more stable and we are encountering a lot of problems due to this now and some cases like this like uh, for for example uh, the this particular seal you can see that the symbols have been uh, like cramped up in the end of the seal this is ba ba basically because uh, as the person who actually intended to write uh, to write this seal was writing it and he didn't find space and he started writing it in the line below and and these symbols are like not well aligned and so the symbol segmentation stage actually fails here and for heavily damaged seals also it fails so 
these are some of the some of the limitations that this pipeline is currently facing and and we have about 417 symbols of which we are in the process of uh, uh, of accommodating all the symbols and we are now do, doing it for the most frequent symbols and in order to generalize this particular pipeline um, to accommodate any kind of ancient inscription outside of, of outside of indescript with the current architecture itself we will we'll just need some minor tweaks with the parameters being used in the region grouping and the symbol segmentation stages and we'll definitely need the data set that actually uh, adopts to this particular architecture like we'll need a text no text and both data set for that and 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 we'll need classifications of how each and every symbol is looking uh, in that particular inscription. So if, if we have the data and if we have the parameters tuned, we can always transfer this particular architecture to suit any kind of ancient inscription. Uh, so with that said, uh, so that is how we actually uh, did apply deep learning to develop this particular optical character recognition uh, engine for the index scripts. And, uh, this actually gained a lot of attention from the Indian media, like uh, the Hindu, the, the, the Times of India, and all covered this. But the starting point of this was the Verge. Uh, they, they actually saw our GitHub repository where we have open sourced this particular code. And uh, they actually got interested and they wrote an article about us. And that's where it all started. And then it led to Times of India, Hindu, and stuff. And, Dr. Mahadevan himself told that if he had had this uh, algorithm 40 years ago, it would have helped him a lot in compiling the Indescript concordance. So this is a, a, a great comment that we got from one of, one of the pioneers in this field. And yeah, thank you. I am actually open for questions if you have any. Uh, yeah, um, so I would like to thank a couple of people for uh, for for actually uh, who, who who actually helped me in this process. It was definitely my pro, 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 professor Ronaldo Adigari at the Institute of Mathematical Sciences, and we got a lot of help from Raja Mutiyar Research Library, where we got the data from, uh, and there is a Indus Research Center. So, situated there and we got a lot of guidance from Dr. Ayurveda Mahadevan too and and in, in particular working at IMSC with Professor Ranojay Adhikari was one of the coolest experiences and the first time I got into IMSC and they had all the supercomputers and stuff and the first day itself I got access to uh, the GPU clusters and I was like a kid in the candy shop and, and, and it was too excited to actually uh, uh, be working at such a place, and the, the kind of environment that you get at I IMSC, it's like it's like full of geeks, and you uh, and and if you're a geek too, you will definitely love the environment there, and 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 almost anyone is is open to any kind of interactions. They are always happy to help you, and the 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 experience at great
Okay. Uh, so there are no more que 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 questions, and I would like to thank uh, Malay Kannan for giving me this opportunity, and the Idli Forum too for giving me this opportunity um, to to ad ad address you people. It, it, it was a great, great experience. Thank you guys. So I'm signing off. <laughs>